What's going on guys? We're live and Mega had to go get Julius because he's barking. So she'll be back in a second. What's up? So I saw before the live even started, we got a lot of chat going. Seems like we're going to have a real hype broadcast tonight. So if you guys are new, this is Murder She Ate. Most of our videos, almost 100% of them are based on keto, the keto diet. We talk about health, nutrition, fitness, that type of stuff. One day only. Usually bi-weekly, but it's, it's been like once a month lately. Yeah. We talk about crimes, murders, mysteries. And that's what we're doing tonight. We have a playlist you guys can check out if you're new on all the Murder She Ate. What's going on? And typically it's called Murder She Ate because we used to eat dinner while we told the story, but we had to do it later since we had Theo, our son. So what are you guys having for dinner? And Mega got me these sparkling flavored mineral waters. So I'm going to have one of these. And Mega's got the story today. I do. And we have an update, actually, on one of the more popular mini mysteries I told on season one. Oh. Do you remember the glitter mystery? No. I'm pouring it into a cup so it's funner. Yeah. Where's everyone from? What are you having for dinner? What's the glitter mystery? We'll get to that. You don't remember Why the glitter are we mystery? Into it now? Okay, we can get right to it. You want to just get into it? Yeah, I do. Okay, so season one. It sounds more professional when you talk about your show in seasons, even though we had a mystery on, and this is where I get a lot of my mini, mini mysteries from on Reddit, the Unresolved Mysteries subreddit. So. There was a mystery in season one of Murder, She Ate where there was a big, someone was doing some investigative work and basically there was uh, an article on an interview from this big glitter company. It's called uh, oh, yeah. Glitterex. Glitterex. There was an like interview. In food. Yeah, it was an interview with like the New York Times or something with a CEO of Glitterex and he's like, actually, the number one industry that we sell glitter to you would never guess. Like, you could never guess what this is. You probably wouldn't even know it's glitter if you looked. If you looked right at it, you wouldn't know it's like glitter. Like tasty cakes or something, right? Yeah, so then everyone was trying to guess. They were coming up with theories. And the prevailing theories on it was basically no. boat paint. Well, who cares about that? Toothpaste, cosmetics, food. was. That's what I landed on. I was yeah. like, I think it's food. Because even when we were watching the Kid Chef show, what's that called? Yeah. With the kids. Baking champions. They just like pour a bunch of glitter on their food. But so it's thought, edible glitter. Yeah. Explosive stuff. And then this person here is coming with a new theory, basically. And what she says, or he, is like she remembers a story about her grandfather who used to work in a chicken wire factory. Hmm. And the number one use for chicken wire, surprisingly, would be like the eye holes in shoes. Like, you know, there's a little... Yeah. Metal part. That was like the number one use for chicken wire, apparently. Oh. So she it got her thinking. She was like, oh, maybe they're using the glitter before. It's probably like built in some sheet, like thin sheet of paper. And then they chop it all up into little glitter. Yeah. So maybe someone gets the sheets before it's even turned into glitter. And then what? So her theory is that it's being sold in sheets and used for its reflective properties um, telescopes, cameras, etc. That's that's the theory. Wait, is this is this the mystery? That was yeah. Well, it's just a new theory on this the old. So mystery. So anticlimactic. That's so boring. What do you I guys think? I thought it was going to be like it's in Pepsi soda drinks we're drinking, and we're all drinking glitter. Oh, a ten dollar donation from Shannon. Thank you, Hello. Shannon. Grilled burger, no bun and broccoli. We had broccoli tonight, twins. Someone's eating some salt and pepper pork rinds. Yeah. Dinner was pork rinds and macadamia nuts. That's a sad dinner. That's like often what you do, I feel like. Have. Not, not often. That's like an after dinner snack. Chicken Caesar salad. Yum. Butter chicken with cauliflower rice from our food block. From our food block? From our food block. Okay, so that was really the theory. That was, you made that so like excitable. Because it was cool that there was an update, like, but oh, yeah. we got a theory. Telescopes. It's like, oh, <laughs> great. It wasn't a great theory, but the good part about not having done Murder, She Ate in a month is that we get one month worth of top posts in the Relationship Advice subreddit. 
Were we doing a lot of them? No. Okay. Yeah. We'll do some before, some after. This is exciting. This is your favorite part, I thought. It is my favorite part. So, relationship advice is a subreddit where people ask their pressing relationship questions on, to us. on Reddit. To us specifically. <laughs> and you guys usually chime in. You have some good answers. I wish to us. And I think this is a good one. You know who give like relationship advice who I don't think should be? Who? The Hodge twins. Hmm. Like how did they build their career? Like they're they, funny. They're doing like stand up. Like they're touring the nation. Well, they started like twelve years ago before YouTube. They were like the I first mean, ones. like I should just be like, hey, why don't we tour and like get on stage? Well, you got to get people to buy the tickets. Oh, I would make make it happen. Okay. Okay, so my 23-year-old... This person's oh, a 20. She's a 23-year-old female. Her boyfriend, 24, wants to move in with me. I want him to live alone first. My boyfriend and I have been together 10 months. He lives with his parents and sisters, younger brothers and sisters. Before current events, they were hanging out all the time. I've been to his place more than once, and I've seen how their dynamic works. A lot of men can probably relate, relate to this. His mother does everything for the family. Men want to marry their moms. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the whole dynamic. And he's 24. So he's living at home still. His mom takes care of him. This is very common in America. Yeah. And um, so he says he wants to move in with her. They've been dating for 10, 10 months, which is not long. But how long was I dating you? We were dating... Maybe a year? Uh, a year and a half. And uh, basically she's like, okay, I'm a little concerned with this because your mom takes care of you. And when you move in, I think I'm just going to be the one taking care of you. And then his response to that was, I'll pay more in rent. I'll pay 75%. Oh. No response to like, no, I, I swear I'll do my part. He's not even like pretending that he's going to. I think I respect that. You do? Can I got to do more? too. Yeah, I mean, if you're down with that as the woman. Yeah, she doesn't seem down though. Then I told him I wanted him to live alone, go from his mother's house to his own place. This has caused a huge argument, biggest we've ever had. He's taken me saying he has no life skills as an insult, which it kind of was, to be fair. And he says basically that clearly I don't want to live with him at all as I pushed the moving in time back and have only said we'd revisit after a few months of him living alone, blah, blah, blah. This was a couple of nights ago and he just stopped talking to me. He's at his mum's. He's online. He's talking to mutual friends who have said he is responding. He won't answer any of my calls, texts. So what are you thinking at this point? He's over. He's ghosting. I don't think he's totally over. You think? Well, oh, he's 24, so I guess he's playing games? He's like, oh, I'll just give her a couple days. I'll, like, ch give her a taste of her own medicine or something. I have no no time for games like that. Like, well, yeah, I mean, but you're 24. I was playing games at 24. I mean, if I'm texting you and you're clearly seeing the text and you're not texting me back for extended periods of time, she's like, what are you doing? He's insulted. He's humiliated. Yeah. She 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 said he has no life skills. Yeah, but wouldn't you like say we something? We go to bed like like if we get in a fight. Yeah. Sometimes we don't talk, right? If yeah. I'm like mad, you're mad. You I want a BF, not a child. I personally couldn't do it. I mean, all men are children in their own ways. Don't marry your mom, dude. <laughs> well, you look for the some qualities, right? You want the woman to take care of you in certain ways. Yeah, I feel like women also look for their dads, kind of. Yeah, I think so. Excited to have egg roll in a bowl tonight. Yeah. I can't find pork rinds nearby me in NYC. Yeah, up in Northeast, I never ever saw pork rinds anywhere. It wasn't until I moved to Georgia. He wanted to use her to move out of his mom's house, make an easy jump. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if she's coming from that angle, but it doesn't sound like she's saying that. Update. He called me and agreed to talk. He then basically said that he was never going to be willing to learn to do anything <laughs> and even suggested dividing up the chores. Then I do my half and he hire a maid to do his half. I mean, at least he kind of knows what he wants. Like, yeah, they, I respect maybe that to they're some not degree. Compatible. I don't know. I respect it. Like, if you're just, if that's you, you're like, I, I'm hiring a maid. I got the money to do it. I'm not doing chores. Well, it doesn't sound like he has the money to do it. But he see, maybe he does because he's yeah. willing to pay 75% of the rent. But also, even if you do have the money, I think there's some lessons to be learned of just like taking care of yourself. This is what's required to sustain you as a human. I don't know. Next one. Kind that of one, a red that flag. That one was a boring one. Was it? Yeah. 
I uh, like juicy. This one might be good because this is like Theo age. My husband is mad that I let my daughter 16 year old or no. My husband is mad that I let my 16 year old son bathe our two year old daughter. Last night I had a really bad migraine and my husband was at work. I asked my son, 16, if he could give his sister to a bath. My head was killing me. He was perfectly fine with this and when my husband got home, he found me asleep. He woke up asking if I had made dinner or given our daughter a bath yet. I told him that I had a migraine so our son gave her a bath. Da, da, da. He screamed at me that this was not okay for him to do unsupervised. He said that my migraine was no excuse not to take care of her. You know, you know the rest. Edit, my son is not related to my husband. Okay, so son from a different marriage. Okay, so maybe that's why he's clearly weirded out. I don't think that's weird, though. You don't think it's weird? No. Right? Yeah. They're, they're siblings. They're brother or sister. But he's half. Okay, having never done a hard day's labor in my life, I can kind of understand the perspective of working all day, coming home, wife's in bed, Son who's not your son bathing your two-year-old daughter. I can see you being upset about that. Yeah, right? but was he upset because she didn't do it or because it's inappropriate for a 16-year-old to be bathing a two-year-old? Probably a combination. I would say it's the latter. You think? But I, I don't think that's inappropriate, except... Uh, but I do get where he's coming from because it's not his son. Yeah. I think... I don't... Yeah, I don't think it's inappropriate for a 16-year-old to bathe a two-year-old. If they're related. Yeah. But I do understand being upset about that, coming home to that scenario. Yeah. Especially if the wife doesn't work. I'm not sure of that situation. I mean, if she has a migraine, I don't know. 16-year-olds babysit all the time, which includes bathing and putting to sleep. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe it's the fact that she didn't do any of the work and dinner wasn't made and he's like mad and he's a typical yeah. also you gotta know like the lead up like is it you're just mailing it in like you're sleeping all day watching soap operas that type of a thing and this is like a recurring no I'm sure that's not the case how do you know could be then why we're would he getting... be posting it on reddit she's posting it oh so we're getting her perspective he's a stepfather and they, and don't, they don't talk, talk much. much I think I mean, it was probably more of the issue that that's just a weird dynamic. No, it's not. A 16-year-old boy, oh, Theo, might right. not talk to us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's not really much you can say to this. Sounds like she had wine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It teaches them responsibility. Has the 16-year-old ever given him a reason to not trust him? Was it the age thing or because it wasn't his son? Yeah, that's a good question. Migraines hurt very badly. Yeah, I used to get migraines. They are pretty bad. Yeah. Ready for the case? Yeah, okay. Those were the two you came with? We got more. Those are so bad, baby. These are the top ones for the month. Yeah, they're not good then. We've had some juicy ones in the past. Yeah. Okay, anyway. I'm doing The Disappearance of Ben Needham. And um, I was just like getting sick while I was doing this case. I always do kids cases and it's, it's hard to get away from them yeah. because they're so, they're so publicized because it's kids, right? Uh -huh. um, but I proceeded through the case and here we go. Okay. So Ben was born in Sheffield, England on October 29th, 1989 to Carrie and Simon. At the time, Carrie was only 17 and Simon was 20. And um, Ben was l loved by both of them, but the parents they did have a slightly tumultuous relationship at the time. Carrie's parents, Eddie and Christine, so the grandparents, um, in 1990, they traveled to Kos, which is an island off of Greece, and they fall in love with the island. So when they return home, they really, they just talk it over and they realize that like they're struggling with unemployment at the time and they're living in poverty. So they decide they could live better lives by moving to coast, this island off of Greece. And so that's what they do in January of 1991. It was, um, so the, so the people that moved to coast originally was the parents, Eddie and Christine, and then their two sons. So Carrie, the mom's brothers, um, Moves with them. So they forego in January, and then a few wait, months wait. later... It's the two of them, and they have two kids. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the, the mom. They have three kids. Carrie. Yeah. And then the brothers. Okay. Three kids, Carrie. 
Mm-hmm. What's Carrie's not a, what is that? So Ben is the kid who disappeared. His mom is Carrie. Carrie's mom is Eddie and Christine, the grandparents. And then Eddie and Christine, the grandparents, also have two other sons, Carrie's brothers. Okay. So they're Ben's uncles. I see. Okay. So, a few months later, Carrie decides to join them because she just wants to be close to her family. And then a few months after that, Simon joins all of them. The two-year-old's a girl or a boy? Boy, right? Ben. They're asking. Ben. Ben. He's not a two-year-old. You said the two-year-old, right? That's what they asked, yeah. No, he's not two years old. Um, He's 21 months when he goes disappearing. (laughs) When he goes disappearing. (laughs) When he disappears. Okay, so everyone at this point is in coast, this island off of Greece. I looked it up. It's very cute, and it's very beautiful. It's cheap, though, which is surprising. Oh, yeah. So Carrie quickly gets a job at a hotel and is really enjoying her time and her life in coast. But Simon, Ben's dad, is struggling and can't hold a job. He also doesn't like it. He's unhappy. He's lonely. So he makes the very difficult decision to go back to England, leaving Carrie and Ben in coast. So he calls his parents. He asks them to wire him some money because he can't even afford the ticket home. And then he leaves. And he says that this was the hardest decision that he had ever made. And unfortunately, it's just a couple days before Ben disappears. How do you spell coast? K-O-S? Mm-hmm. This is basically Turkey. Yeah, it's, it's like almost Turkey. I'm surprised this is even actually Greece. That looks like Turkey. Okay. That's that. Island off of Turkey? Do you want to change it? Well, I guess it must be part of Greece. Yeah, it's... Okay, so it was on July 24th, 1991, Ben goes disappearing. Is that the proper sentence, Ben goes disappearing? No, he disappeared. Ben disappeared on July 24th, 1991. So let's go through the day. It started off the same as any, Christine, which is the grandmother. Olga's saying we need a diagram of the characters. I sort of agree. Could you just recap one last time the whole characters here? Okay, do we have pen and a paper? No. Okay, so Ben is the main character. He is a little boy, goes disappear. <laughs> Why I'm saying goes disappearing? That makes no sense. I don't know how to do text. Just scribble. So we got Ben. Put B. Why would you put that? B. Okay, mom and dad. Above Ben? Sure. Okay. That's Carrie and Simon. And then Christine and Eddie go off of mom. Grandparents? Yeah. Christine and Simon? Eddie. Simon's the dad. Christine and Eddie, okay. And then the brothers go off of the mom and the grandparents. Brother. Two. Is this dad not these their their father? <laughs> what? No. Those boys belong to the grandparents. It's Carrie's brothers. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's like this. Does this help you guys? Yeah, Probably this not. helps, this okay. helps. Okay, so the day started off the same as any. Christine, the grandmother, was looking after Ben while Carrie went to her hotel job. And this was just a regular thing. And at the time, the family was living in a caravan, which is also like a trailer. They say caravan, I guess, in yeah, the UK. Yeah, this is a UK thing, so they're like uh, gypsies. No, they're I- not gypsies, but that's funny because gypsies come up in the story. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of bare knuckle boxing documentaries. I don't know. There's if gypsies... a lot of gypsies in Greece. Yeah, there's a lot all over Europe. I all think over it's... the world. No, there's not in America. Okay, Europe. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's mostly like a UK thing. I don't even know if gypsy is like a politically correct term. It's it not. Might be... It's okay. derogative. Okay, but they're uh, Roma people. I think they call themselves, or no, they call themselves like traveling, traveling people, like travelers. Well, they're Romas. Romans. But yeah, I've seen a couple. There's some really good bare knuckle boxing documentaries. Okay, back to the case. So at the time, the family was living in a trailer while their farmhouse was being renovated. And at this time, Ben was 21 months old. Okay. And it was Christine, 11 year old Danny, and Ben at the caravan at the time, while the older son, Stephen, who was 17, and the father were at the farmhouse working. On the renovations. Did okay. you follow? 
Just a lot of characters in this one. No, it's just these characters. Okay. So say the that two one more the time. two brothers are Danny and Steven. Okay. Danny's 11, Steven is 17. Okay. And that's the mom's brothers, right? Yeah. So okay. it's the brother, yeah, the brother. Okay. The uncle. So now what happened here? Okay. So at the time uh, on that day, it was Danny, the 11-year-old, the grandmother, Christine, and Ben, they were all at the caravan. And then the older son and the dad, Eddie, so the grandfather and Stephen, they were at the house working on the renovations. So Christine said that it was a pretty difficult morning with Ben because he was refusing to eat. So he's 21 months old. It's not, like, too difficult, but it's, like, probably very common. They're just, like, so, terrible twos, you know, that yeah, kind of a thing. Just to repeat, it's Christine, one of the boys, and Ben. Yeah. Okay. So this is who's at the trailer. You're making this very complicated. Continue. Okay. So, since it is a difficult morning, Christine decides that they're going to all go up to the farmhouse and, you know, say hello to Grandpa and Uncle Stephen. So, she gets him in his little buggy and she gives him toy cars. So, it's like just like little race car toy cars. And he's playing with them and they walk up to the farmhouse. Okay. So, the farmhouse was at the top of a hill. Um, and it was just one single, like, dirt path leading up to it. And it was a very remote area. And then further down that same path, there was another house being built, but no one was living in it. There was just, like, construction workers at it at the time. Do you want do to show they, a picture of the farmhouse? Yeah, do they own the all of these properties? The farmhouse, yeah. Is this the farmhouse? Yeah. So that's, like, the farmhouse. So you can tell, like, it's, like, pretty remote. You don't have to, like, get close and stuff. It's just, like... Yeah. There's no other houses around. I think this is after a little bit of the renovation's already done. This actually looks pretty nice. If you're living on a budget and you can live like right on the coast like that, this looks nice. But I can see that, yeah, it doesn't seem like the nicest area. Well, it's just remote. So there's like no, no one around it, nothing near it. Yeah, so that's actually something I learned about. Like we moved, I moved, I lived near Detroit and like I lived in Philadelphia and then we moved to Atlanta. There's like the urban like sort of, you know, bad areas. But when you get to like the country bad areas, that's like really scary. That's a lot scarier than like the urban bad areas. Because they're further areas. away from people. Yeah. So like, you remember when we almost ran out of gas when we were driving? Yeah, but I was sleeping. It was really scary. We were on zero gas. You were so scared. I was like, we're fine. We're fine. My dad always drives on empty because my dad does always drive on empty. I don't know why. He like always is pushing the boundaries. He's like a risk taker with gas. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> okay. So when they get up to the farmhouse... Christine lets Ben out of the buggy, and he's playing with his toy cars, not thinking much of it. So at the time, it is 1991, and, you know, we, like, growing up, I was just, like, let out the front door. I'd be out all day, all night, mm -hmm. and you just come home. Um, so, so Ben is let out of the buggy. He's, like, goes off, starts playing, and then everyone comes out of the house to say hi. So the grandfather and Uncle, be Uncle Stephen. Um, and there's also, just to remember, there's no people around. So uh, Christine realizes that Ben had wet himself, and at the time he wasn't wearing a diaper, so she just takes off his shorts and hangs them up to dry. And then around 1.30 p.m., the family sits down for lunch, and they have a friend join them. The friend really doesn't come into play too much, but just to note that there was someone else there. Okay. And then after lunch, Uncle Stephen, what, the 17-year-old the brother of Carrie... That's Stephen? Yeah. Is he the, okay, I guess it doesn't matter. But yeah. Uncle Stephen, he heads into town on his motorcycle. Um, so he's gone. And at this point, Christine realizes that she hadn't heard from Ben in a while. Like, it was super quiet, and she would have noticed him by now. So I guess he wasn't really, like, he wasn't having lunch with them. He was just kind of playing and doing his thing. So she goes out of the front of the house and down that path that they came up. And then Eddie, the grandfather, goes to the back of the house, and he looks into all the fields... They're thinking Ben might be missing right now. They're looking for him. Yeah, they just can't find him. They're not. It's not. They're not panicked or anything. Yeah. So they can't find him anywhere. And at the point, at this point, the grandparents they're not really worried. They just assume that Stephen, the uncle, he, when he went into town, he took Ben with him. On a motorcycle. So that's a weird assumption to have. I would say. Why? Why would you take a two-year-old on a motorcycle? Why? He sits on the front. It's fun. No, it's not. That's. I mean, it's illegal. Is it? Yeah. To take a two-year-old on a Probably motorcycle? Probably not in Greece or England. In India, we do it all the time. I'm pretty sure it's illegal in Greece. In India, we do it all the time. Yeah. Well, There's always... Little, how do you get around? That's people's main... Not everyone has cars. It's a small area. It's Greece. It's coast. Okay, I mean, it's maybe, maybe it's legal. If it's your main form of transportation. Um, so, 
Christine, the grandmother, um, at this point they are thinking that, like I said, Stephen took Ben into town with him and she, Christine, the grandma, also notices that Ben's shorts that were hanging up on a tree to dry and his toy cars are missing. And so this is another reason she would believe that, okay, well, Stephen put his shorts back on and took him into town, right? That makes sense. Like, why would everything just be missing? I don't know that a 17-year-old boy would take the shorts and put them on the kid like that. Well, I wouldn't take him with his, like, wee-wee out. Wouldn't well, you put his diaper? clothes on? Didn't he have a diaper on or no, something? No, he wasn't wearing a diaper. Oh, okay. He was just naked. I guess that makes sense. He'd put his shorts on for sure. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, and then, so... And, and remember, like, it is 91, so there's no phone. So they really just have to wait for Stephen to come back in order to know if Ben was even with them. Um, so later that evening, Christine, Eddie, and Danny, they head back into town, and they go over to Carrie's apartment and notice that Stephen is in the shower. So they, like, knock on the door, and they're like, hey, is Ben with you? And he says, no, he hasn't seen him since earlier at the farmhouse. That, that's annoying. I know, it is. Did you bang him? Um, so at this point there is panic and they end up finally contacting the police. <clears throat> so Christine, the grandma, <clears throat> she waits out of Carrie, waits outside of Carrie's work to tell her that Ben is missing and that one of the police, that the police officers want her to go up to the farmhouse and call out for Ben. So like maybe if Ben's hiding, he hears his mom calling, he'll come running out. Um, and then... And still, it was like at this point that no one thought of an abduction because in 91, like abductions, I guess, weren't, I mean, they probably existed, but you wouldn't immediately jump to the conclusion like my child's abducted. Like if Theo was missing right now, I would automatically assume there was an abduction. When you yeah, know. but we're living in a completely different circumstance. So a lot of times, from what I know, based on bare knuckle boxing documentaries, these types of people, they travel around, they're like, it's... Like, you have a neighbor, and then the next day your neighbor's gone, and it's, like, not a big deal. It's, like, understood. Then you, like, meet up with them somewhere else. And I feel like you just don't have the same, like, tracking of people as you do in, like, the suburbs like we do. So the fact that the kid's missing, I guess if they're living, I guess it depends. If they're living in, like, a community, I always seen it where it's, like, kind of a community, you know? Yeah, the so, Romas, they, they are in communities. They are? The Romas, Yeah. The gypsies. These, yeah, but these people specifically? No. Oh. Because usually, like, maybe the baby, like, someone else, he's, like, sleeping in a bed of some other caravan. No, see, what you're thinking is actually one of the biggest theories, is the theory, because I guess we'll get to it, but these gypsies, I, I don't want to keep using it if people are offended, but the Roma people, they they live in their communities, and they they do take children. Oh, do they? Like, child trafficking, that's a big part of it. That would, yeah. Because if they can't have, because they really like, so Ben was blonde hair, blue eyed. So like, if you look up Roma people, I mean, we're going to show you a picture of a girl who was um, supposedly taken and we'll get to that. Okay. So it wasn't, so it's not until like midnight that same day that Eddie thinks that, okay, maybe now someone could have taken him. So he rushes down to the docks around 2 a.m., and he's using a flashlight looking into people's cars for Ben as they're leaving the island. And so, like, at this point, he realizes, like, hundreds of cars have left the island. So if Ben was abducted, he, he's likely gone, right? Yeah. Like, so much time has already passed. And so Coast, Coast, the island, is small enough to search pretty quickly. And so if Ben wasn't there, he had to have been off the island. That's their immediate thought. But could you search? Your, I would imagine the police force on coast is like not the most advanced. And then when they get a call from these tra group of Romas, they're probably they're like they're not Romas, babe. Oh, these are British people that live in coast. Remember, they went from Sheffield, England, to coast. Yeah, they're travelers, though, right? No. Don't they have a caravan and stuff, and they're traveling around? No, you're you're just they you're just melding two different things. Oh, okay. They're just like me and you if we decided to move to Hawaii. Okay. We're not okay. like travelers, right? We just relocated. Yeah, they moved. And they're only living in the trail caravan because their farmhouse is being renovated. Oh, okay. That's totally different. Okay. Okay. Um, so the police immediately look at the grandparents and the uncles, which makes sense, right? That's what you normally do. And they question them extensively for multiple days before realizing they had nothing to do with it. 
So their original theory, the police's original theory, is that Stephen, the uncle who went into town on his motorcycle, accidentally hit Ben and hit him because the motorcycle itself had a big dent on the front of it. So That's all, quite the theory to come out of the gates I know. <laughs> so all this questioning, if anything, just delayed the entire investigation. And so the docks and the airports weren't even informed of Ben's disappearance until three days later, which is very unfortunate. And, like, it's possible the motorcycle just has a dent on it from some other... Yeah, so it took him, took him all that time to, like, prove to them that it was from a while ago. I'm just imagining this cop who's, like, seen a few episodes of CSI, and he's just, like, a normal patrol cop, and he's like, that looks like a baby dent on the front of the motorcycle. Um, so the police also looked at the possibility that Simon, the father, remember he, was, he wasn't he was enjoying coast, so he went back to England. He returned to coast to take Ben back to England. So Simon had to fly in to coast with paperwork to show that he was in England the entire time, which he was able to do. So a couple of the things that cause issues with this investigation are cultural differences among the British and the Greek. So the... In the, so the differences are three. The first is that in Greece, it's really rare for a mom to leave her child at home with someone else and go to work. In Greece? Yeah. And so the police were immediately like, you must have harmed your child. You don't care enough. Why would you, you don't go love to work? Him. Yeah. The second thing was that it was confusing for the police that Carrie and Simon had a child together, but they were unmarried. Okay. And then the third thing was Ben's name. So Ben's name is Ben Stephen Needham. Stephen was the uncle's name, so he's named after his uncle. And in Greek culture, the child gets the parental grandfather's name as the first name, and then the middle name is the father's name. So this led police to question his paternity altogether. I mean, surely the police are capable of understanding like they're not from your country they do things a little differently but they're, right? but they're not just they're like also small island police you know yeah it's, it's a culture shock almost you know they're like i'm i'm confused i don't get it I, in 1991 though i don't think the default is everyone on earth behaves the exact same way i do i i think you're taking it to the extreme but like these little things to someone who's really stuck in their ways, they're going to be like, why would the mom go to work? Like, this makes no sense. This isn't adding up. Is he even their child? Like, I can see where, the, you know, the lines are crossed. It's weird the direction we move. Like, the more advanced civilizations, the mother starts going to work, and it's more normal to have a child without being married. That's kind of a weird progression, isn't it? Why? You would think it would be kind of the opposite. I mean, women didn't even have rights for a while. Voting rights, right? Yeah, what does that mean, though? So we're progressing towards women having more rights and freedom. Being able to work? Yeah. Yeah. And not have to just be the caretaker. Like, we have stay-at-home dads well, do you now. you have to? Isn't that a privilege? Is it, I don't know what you're saying. Is it a privilege? Yeah. To take care of your child? Yeah. No. It's like a luxury, isn't it? I mean, you have to take care of your child. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, but the luxury of being able to spend a lot of time with them. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Okay. Um, Just going to rights immediately. <laughs> Did someone say that? No, you. Oh. Okay, so other investigation avenues. So on the 25th, the day after Ben's disappearance, the builders who were working at the other house down the road, they said, they came forward saying that they saw a white car parked in that like dirt alley with two men in the front and one woman in the back around 2.30 p.m. Wait, who's saying this? The construction workers from the other house. Okay. And they're working that late at night? 2.30 p.m. Oh, okay. They said a.m. And, but the police never followed up on this lead because they suck. And then later, another woman came forward stating that she saw a boy matching the description of Ben who was speaking English to an older boy around the age of eight and that, they, that the way they were speaking made it seem like they weren't related. Could Ben speak English good like that? They're well? well? <laughs> they're from England. Okay, but at that age, she's like having conversations. At two. Can't baby speak? Kids speak, I think. 12, 21 months. Um, so over the years, there have been sightings reported from Kos and Greece, but it's very like unlikely that he's still on Kos. Um, and then just after 11 days, the police chief says verbatim, we now believe we have searched every possible part of the area. The boy is not there. This leaves us with a great mystery. We have no theories. We have no solutions. So it's kind of like they're giving up at this point. They're still doing some searches, but basically their lead, every lead is a dead end. Yeah. So the family then informs the British Embassy. 
But the British Embassy says they can't offer any help because no one's been arrested and this is best to be kept with the Greek police. Like, they know what they're doing. So in September, the family returns to the UK due to some illness in the family. And though they said it was very heartbreaking for them to leave the island because Ben wasn't found, they felt that they had to. So at this point, Carrie moves back in with Simon and she eventually has a nervous breakdown because she is hallucinating. She, she just hears him calling her. She hears like Ben, her son, calling out to her. She sees him running down the hallway. So she's eventually um, committed to a hospital to get some help. And at this point, the Greeks' main theory is abduction. So the day Ben went missing, Eddie, the grandfather, he went to talk to the construction workers at the other house being built. And they kept repeating the same word in Greek, but the word itself was Romani. And he didn't know what it meant because he couldn't speak. Like, he was he spoke English. He didn't know what they were saying. But Wait, wait say that again? What are you doing? They're somewhat spamming. Oh. Uh, so you didn't listen to anything I was saying? No, I heard you were saying it sounded Greek, it sounded Romany. No, the, the construction workers kept repeating the word Romany. Romany, why? Romany is a type of people, the gypsies. Mm -hmm. So, um... They were saying that's what Ben was? No, they were just... they. So he went to go talk to them, and they spoke greek so they could they weren't having like a full conversation yeah, but they were repeating the same word over and over and it turns out that the word was romany mm -hmm. um and so roma people then a little bit on the roma people is they make up a small percentage of the greece population and they originate from north they originate from northern india and they face a lot of racism based on how they look and how they live their lives. So like you were saying, they tend to live in communities, they travel, they, they tend to like live in more in poverty, they don't have the best hygiene. Um, and as the story of m missing Ben spread throughout Greece, Roma people, but uh, the people of Greece turned to the Roma people to blame them that this was their fault. Like he was taken by the Roma people, and, you know, basically just child trafficked. That's how it always happens. Yeah. There's always, like, this battle of, like, with Madeline McCann, it's the same type of thing. Yeah. Um, it is, yeah, it's actually very similar. So, um, there were lots of people saying that they had seen Roma families with blonde-haired, blue-eyed boys. Is a blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy, like, a, he stands out in the area, or are Greek people, are they blonde hairs and blue eyes? No, Greek people are pretty olive in skin. So he kind of stood out? Yeah, with Roma people, because Roma people are even darker. Okay. Um, so this, there's just like lots of rumors and r racism that the Roma people face. And in 2013, uh, there was a rumor that Roma families abducted children that was further fueled when police discovered a blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl living in a Roma family, with a Roma family in Greece. You can show the picture. This one? Yeah. So, and this this couple right here, they kept claiming that she was their daughter. She was their originally, like, just their daughter. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. So the police ended up doing a DNA test, and it came back that she did actually belong to... She didn't... No, she didn't belong to the family. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be a twist. But the mother was eventually tracked down, and she herself was Romani. She just had two other children. She was living in deep poverty. So she sold her child here, Maria, to this family. So it seems common. And it seems yeah. like Romani people can have children who look like that. I don't think you can understand the story without having watched the Bare Knuckle Boxing documentaries, at least two of them. Honestly, it really gives context to this whole lifestyle. And yeah, I guess even the movie Snatch, you've seen that, right? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like, there's like a group of people and the kids kind of just belong to them all. It's not like, there's not like ownership the same way it is like Theo's our kid. Yeah. Like Theo could sleep in some other random person's trailer for a week and it would be kind of normal. Yeah. So days after the story of Maria, this girl that we just showed you, came out, Irish police went to a Roma camp in Ireland and two took, took two children that were blonde haired and blue eyed who they believed were kidnapped and did a DNA test. And it turned out that the children were actually kids of the family that they took them from. We're just able to go in and take kids away this is insane. And and then I immediately thought of, I immediately thought of Theo. 
Because if someone saw Theo with me, our son, he's blonde haired, blue eyed, they wouldn't assume. Yeah, but you got like your Lululemon leggings on, and they're like, okay, she checks out. I know, my Lululemon. I have one pair. But what I'm saying is that like people with dark hair, dark skin, dark eyes can have blonde hair, blue eyed babies, right? Because you would think my genes are dominant, but I, how, where does the blue eyes come from? He should have brown yeah. eyes. So, just as an example. So, Eddie and Christine, the grandparents, because at this time, Carrie's in the hospital, they follow up with multiple sightings over the years. So, like, there's one a month, and every time there's a sighting, they go back to Coates, or they go back to Greece, and they even speak to Roma communities and all the Greek people. Um, and over the years, there's been multiple DNA tests done to compare against Ben's, but obviously nothing has turned up. And even a couple times, so in 2013, a man from a Roma community comes forward to have his DNA tested because he looks like he could be an adult then. <laughs> um, but it wasn't a match. And this happened multiple times, which is crazy to think. Um, and then there's photo progressions that are made every couple of years. And the most recent one is from 2017, which I have shared as well. So that's what he would look like. How cute. Yeah. Okay, so in 1994, Carrie and Simon, so they're the parents of Ben, they have a second child named Leanna, and she basically has dedicated her entire life to looking for her brother, even though she's never met him. Hmm. Um, and then in October in 2012, officers travel to Coast with search specialists to conduct search on a pile of rubble near the farmhouse that they believed Ben could be buried under. So going on the theory that Ben may have been accidentally buried by excavators, but nothing comes of this. Then in February 2015, the British police are granted 700 um, pounds to help, 700,000 pounds to help in search for Ben. And then in 2016, a new line of inquiry opens up. So this is like the most recent, most exciting. Okay. This is exciting? Well, it's, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so a man named Dino, he dies of stomach cancer and was one of, and he was actually one of the workers that was at that house that down the Death street. Deathbed confession? From, yeah. Okay. So he makes a deathbed confession and he tells a friend that he hit Ben with his digger and buried him. So the, he tells his friend, but the family denies this because they find it hard to believe it's true. And so nothing really comes of it, but that's weird, right? I mean... If I'm putting myself in that situation, I'm on my deathbed. I'm not just making up some crazy murder that I committed when I didn't do it. Yeah. But if I did commit the murder, would I tell my friend I did? I don't know. Yeah, I feel I would. like either way you would. If I was on my deathbed, if I was dying of stomach cancer, I was in pain, and I did something terrible, I would just get it off my chest. Yeah, I Why guess I, I, I could grave? see that. You're right, yeah. So I think the confession makes... There's a lot of people that do just crazy stuff for fame, too, where they're just confessing to things they didn't do. But if he's going to die, he doesn't even know he's going to get famous. I think that it's hard for me to put a ton of weight on that, really. Because, like, why would you just hit a kid in the head and bury him? That makes no real sense. I don't know. People do crazy things all the time. So then in September, on September 16, 2016... A uh, brand new search for his remains has started, and it's mainly focused on this in in an area where this tree that has grown since he went missing. So it wasn't the tree wasn't there when uh, Ben went missing. So a team of nineteen go to coast. They conducted a search, and it lasted one month. And during this search, they find a hundred bones that all belong to animals, but they also find a small piece of leather that they belo they think belongs to the sandal Ben was wearing, along with a little toy car that his mom said oh. definitely belonged to Ben. And on both pieces of this evidence, there is blood. So right. we think we have something here. And they found this 15 years later? Yeah. Um, so the blood is sent to labs to get tested, and it comes back that it is not Ben's. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like 16 years later. Yeah. So, the real two things that are possible here are child traffic sold to a family that raised him. And I think that's what the mom wants to believe, right? That maybe he's just being raised by another family. I would say in this situation, a pretty high likelihood that he's still alive yeah. would be, like, over, definitely over 50%. I would say so, too. So, like, normally you don't believe child no. trafficking, but in this case... Oh, 
I can believe child trafficking. Normally, I just believe that it's like the kid's usually dead by now. Oh. But this one, I think he might still be alive. But child trafficking, I could, I could believe that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, whenever we talk about trafficking, you always think it's like not as big as a deal. I think in this context, maybe it makes more sense because... With the Roma community isn't... I don't know, but I'm also just like putting blame on them, but yeah. Yeah, you haven't seen Knuckle. This doesn't look like it has anything to do with what we're talking about. Uh, it doesn't have a ton to do. I don't even remember if this Wait, is the that? one. It's just water or something. Oh. But... What is this? Are you going to talk about it? Oh, this is a documentary, Knuckle. Oh. The Bare Knuckle sure. Boxing. So that's it. What's your what's your theory? I think, yeah, I think he was just likely, because it was for a while that he was just out playing. And yeah, someone could have just easily snatched him. He's probably so tiny. Why would your last words be lies? Yeah. I don't know. When you start trying to psychoanalyze someone that, you know, hit a kid with a shovel and buried him, I don't know, it could be anything. I could see that person lying. Or I guess in that case, they wouldn't be lying, though. Why were his shorts gone? Yeah. So, yeah, we really, like, trace through the footsteps. Shorts are there, and the kid's playing with... His cars. His cars. So if you're going to if you're gonna abduct a child and want to keep him and not murder him, you're going to take his toys and his shorts, right? You want him to have his toys if he, he's going to live with you and play. And I don't think it matters too much. You're just trying to grab the kid and get out. Yeah, but if you're poor and you have other kids, these cars are valuable. No. You're, when you're taking a kid, a car is nothing. You can find him a car some other place. Well, I don't think this was like a speedy, like, oh, like the parents are right there. We got to snatch him and, like, leave. I thought they were just like, oh, like, let's grab this kid. Let's take his toys. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to steal the kid, it'd probably be pretty easy if you, like, picked her at the right time. Yeah, so I don't think, I think they were probably like, oh, like these little yeah. toy cars, Ben would probably like these, let's take them. They probably even lured him, it wasn't even like a, a grab and go, it was yeah, like, oh, let's, let's take your car over here. Oh, grab your shorts, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Those yeah. are the worst, when I think of those, like, the stranger that's just Trump. like tricking the five-year-old kid. Oh my god. It's really, yeah. I've only seen it in movies. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, people are like, kept captive in like cement basements and like... Oh, we got a good one here. Sunflower 13. Ethical question. Are y'all for or against microchipping babies to prevent kidnapping? I know. I, is that a thing? I don't think so. Oh. Are you... Are you for or against? I'm thinking. <laughs> you have to think about it? I Dang. mean, just to, like, to know where my son is at all times? I mean, clearly... Okay, so I'm obviously against it. But would I put a tracking device on Theo's phone without him knowing if I was nervous about him going out and staying out late at night when no. he's like 12 and 13? Possibly yes. I'm completely opposed. Yeah, but yeah, so I'd have to talk this over with Matt and Matt wouldn't let me do anything, so. Yeah, of course. But wouldn't you want to know where he is? I would, but I'm not... If he was lying, I wouldn't even like, call him out and be like, I know you're at a party. I would just be like, okay, at least I know where he is. I don't care if he's drinking and he's lying. In a vacuum, if it's just like microchip or some kind of app that I can tell where he is, I wouldn't hate it ah, when he's yeah. like 12 or 13. But it's not just you and the kid in the app. It's like the people that make the app, gathering data, they know where your kid's at. I don't like that. What do you mean? He's all over social media right now and he's on YouTube. People... Yeah, but... I mean, yeah. We put him, like, there's, I mean, why are we putting him on the internet? There's gives and takes. Okay, well, we've already given a lot. We shouldn't show him no, anymore. No, we do give a lot. I yeah. Um, uh, what else you guys got? Find my phone does that for you. Yes, it does. I'd be in favor if it was healthy and could be removed slash absorbed by puberty <laughs> or before. I love absorbed, absorbed. as an option. <laughs> I do, too. Yeah. But, like, see, the app, uh, I feel like we'd have to put on our kid's phone when they don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd have to be secret hidden in the back. I don't want to do that. I don't like stuff like that. Okay. I so, do, because it was done to me. Are you guys at all getting nervous with the constant progression of technology and just everyone just continually saying, yes, yes, I need the next thing, or, the next thing? Or are you, like, the worried about the progression of women being able to work and have a say in things? No, I want to hear about the technology first. Are you guys getting a little nervous with, like, where things are heading with technology and just 
And baby Constantly. blue axe. Matt is obsessed with bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> <laughs> he is obsessed with it. I am, because it's really cool. And they're not actually good at boxing. It's more of just like the toughest guy usually wins, not the best boxer. Yeah, but, there's a whole black mirror about a tracker on your kid. It's oh, freaky. Yeah. And then she like hits her mom. Mm-hmm. And then also like that chip where you can rewind and watch your memories. That was one of the better ones. That was like the best. That was such a good one. I, my favorite one is the space, the one where the guy goes into the video game, like the Space Troopers mm-hmm. one. Yeah, USS. Yeah, yeah, that one. The first one. My kids are teenagers and they're cool with it. Huh. And they are cool with it? That's good for you. I feel like you think you have privacy now. You don't. No, no we don't, don't think, have privacy. I, I don't, don't think, think anyone it. thinks they have privacy. You know, the, the, the presidential elections in like 2060 is going to be fun when... <laughs> Every single candidate has like done something online that's like you know yeah. frowned upon. That actually could be a good strategy if you just preserve your child's social image until he's like fifty and he's like the only option for president. Maybe we could do that with Theo. I'm nervous that Alexa is listening and recording all that I say inside the home. I refuse to purchase one. Yeah, so she is, yeah. and we were the same way. And then my dad got us one, and now we love it. I would be comfortable getting rid of it, though. We can. I don't care. We've had it for, like, a year already. Yeah. You want to get rid of it? Uh, yeah. See, he loves could. playing music, though, because it could be like, Alexa! Yeah. Um, they did not find the kid yet. No. Someone just came back. I still have a flip phone, someone says. Oh. That's a shame. Yeah. My cell, my cell phone talks to me when I don't ask a question. My laptop does that. Like today, during we were doing a podcast interview, and it kept like yeah. trying to answer me. It was weird. Yeah, weird things happen. Like some people say, if you leave Facebook on and you like put like a Italian movie on, and then it starts like sending you ads in Italian and stuff. It's just like yeah, of course that makes sense. Does it? Right, Facebook. Yeah. I mean, do we approve of that? Is that like something we sign off on? We were like talking about something once, and then it started showing up on my Instagram feed. Yeah. I don't know. Watch the Mandela effect. Yeah, I've looked at the Mandela effect. I'm pretty sure it's fake. I don't think it's. Well, it's like the Jiff Jiffy thing, right? Yeah, it's just you misremembering the past a little bit. Like, I'm not. I I was pretty into the Mandela effect when I first heard about it. Then I thought about it a little more, and I'm just like. It's all just people misremembering, like the collective mind remembering one thing as something else. Yeah, do you guys know about the Mandela Effect? That's actually a fun, uh, like, mini-mystery. Did I do that once for a mini-mystery? I might have. Yeah, a while ago, before I was even pregnant. Yeah, so here's 40 Mandela Effect examples. Ooh, I'm excited. Nelson Mandela's death. Yeah, this is why it's named this. Like, everyone thinks he died in, like, the 80s, in, but he died, like, four years ago. In prison, right? E- no. Maybe? I think people think he died in prison. No, yeah, people thought he died in prison. Jiff, Jiffy, classic one. There's actually examples of people confirming the Mandela effect. They call. They think this confirms it. They call into a restaurant, and they're like, hey, do you guys still sell the peanut butter burger? And they're like, yeah, we have it. It's, it's our best seller. What kind of peanut butter do you put on there? And he's like, Jiffy. And he's like, see, this proves it. But it's really Jiff. Jiffy is idiot. Jiffy's like a cornbread mix. Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Which one's the real one? T-U-N-N. T-U-N-E-S. Oh, I thought it was this. You did? Ew. Yeah. Of course, Tunes is spelled correctly. Well, cartoons, it would be Tunes. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. This is a big one, too. The Bernstein Bears. The Bernstein Bears. It's an A. That's the right way, right? Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's always the other one. Curious George's tail. Yeah, the tail looks so bad. It does. It was never there. This is, yeah, sex in the city, sex and the city. Febreze. Febreze. I've never even heard of some of these. Oscar Mayer. It's just people, like, misremembering Yeah, this stuff. is not... This is dumb. There's, like, a few pretty concrete examples, but then a lot of it is just sort of misremembering. It's just, like, misspelling a word. Mandela Effect is BS, someone says. Shazam. Oh, yeah, Shazam. Eminem is getting married? To who? Is he? I hope it's to Mariah Carey. That would be fitting. Is it? Mariah Carey married Nick Cannon. I think they got a divorce. 
Yeah. Oh, this is a. Oh, it's an April Fool's or something. Yeah, I always thought Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey was sort of a weird one because I understand. Well, like, Nick Cannon's like hot. Mariah Carey's not. Well, Mariah Carey's like what, fifteen years older than him or something? Yeah, I just don't think she has like a. I don't know. I just. I don't think it's the age thing though. I just think. Well, she was at one point super sexy, but you know when it's like a fifteen-year difference and you're a celeb popping celebrity. Not the decision I would make. What else? Should we do one uh, sure. relationship advice? Show, show. My husband eats so much food, over 10K calories a day, and has gotten so obese, I just don't effing know what to do anymore. He didn't used to be like this. We got married. We were both 25. Now we're 33, and he's gone from 180 to over 450. This happened. I mean, that's... I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. So how are you just posting this to Reddit? Yeah. His medical problems? Dang. Okay, we don't agree Many stroke. Just, yeah, a lot of medical problems. He can't problems. walk much. That's probably a big one. His diet goes through drive throughs on his way to work, way home, and picks up takeout, McDonald's, Burger King, Chinese, Chick-fil-A, all that type of stuff. Gets all this delivered from Uber Eats whenever he feels like it, which is at least once a day. He even does it in the middle of the night. Everything else is junk food, like chips and other packaged snacks, candy, all that type of stuff. All his meals are full of sugar, frying oil, butter, fat, and grease. See, they still always throw butter in as like a, a very symbolic bad food. Yeah, well, if he's spreading butter on Twinkies, that's bad. <laughs> We're both, he probably gets margarine though, that's the thing. We're both work from home right now. I've watched him for a few days this week, keeping a record. Okay, that's just a, like a very passive aggressive. Keeping a record of everything he ate that I saw. If he ate at night or when I was in the other room, I missed those. And then looked up the approximate calorie value of every item. Every single day was at least 10,000 calories. That's kind of hard for me to believe. The worst day was over 14,000. Well, if he's 450 calories, that could be possible. He's definitely ate a lot, but... I mean, 10,000 calories. Like, have you seen some of the 10,000 calorie challenges? That's, it's like an eating challenge. But if you're just... Probably eating like 5,000, 6,000. Yeah, maybe she overestimated. Um, back to him to go to the doctor. So she said she's terrified that she'll be burying him soon? Yeah. What else can I do to get him to take care of himself? Well, why are you posting on Reddit, bro? That's a great question. Your husband well, gained hundreds of pounds over the years, and you were just having an issue. Like, I don't, I mean, you had to, like, stay home and work from him during COVID to understand that he is eating this much food. Like, you clearly don't have a close enough relationship. Yeah, it's, I don't know. So, like, I always go back to. You're living very different lives. Are they, though? I guess that's my question. Like, well, she's not like me. I don't believe she's like, you know, yeah, going to Orange Theory every morning, right? She's probably not doing She's that. probably eating the fast food with him. Yeah, maybe just like less of it, but maybe even not. But like, she's married when they're 25. Now we're 33. I don't know. A lot of it is the initial decision. Like, the decision to marry someone has to be like... Or maybe it's something happened decision. in his life that caused this eating. Like, you don't just all of a sudden go from 180 to 450, right? Well, getting married, I can see you kind of just easing into things. To 450? You, you don't ease into 450. Yeah. I mean, that's... I don't know. That's tough. He needs, like, an intervention. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, you can, all you can really do is lead by example, though, right? I mean, clearly it's not working. Like, like have you have to obviously sit down and have like a serious talk. Like, hey, this is getting very serious. Let's, let's do something let's do together. This together. Yeah. That's that's the only real answer. I always love seeing what Reddit says. They're always just like, leave him, disown your entire family. Have you told him everything you've told us? Yes, I've told him many times. I know he loves me. I believe that because he is as okay. kind and sweet and hardworking as ever. I just don't know why he doesn't make the connection with me. With every burger he orders, he gets closer to leaving me. <laughs> it's very ominous. Uh, you don't ease into 450. Uh, yeah. You guys got anything? 
Marriage does not cause that type of weight gain. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Yeah, that's a tough one. But yeah, it has to be some kind of like group thing where you're like, let's let's do this together. Last one. I, a 31-year-old male, told my girlfriend, 30-year-old female, that she is not a trophy wife or a status symbol and that we are similar in attractiveness. She views it as me calling her old and ugly. Bit of background. Uh, me and my girlfriend, 30 to 31, we have been dating for about a year. I work as a high-level engineer at a good firm, and my girlfriend works as a payroll specialist at a good firm. I make significantly more than her, 3x. Things were good in our relationship until I showed her my retirement slash savings. She now doesn't see the point of working and has started framing our relationship in that she is a beautiful one and that I'm the nerdy engineer that was lucky to have her. Bef yeah, so that's projection, right? In what, what sense? She's projecting. How? What is she projecting? She now doesn't see the point of working and has, she's starting to frame their relationship that she is a beautiful one. So since she sees he's bringing more to the table financially, she has to try enforcing the fact that he's lucky to have her. She's hot. There's something him. she's bringing to the table. Yeah. Before, when we met, she was all about making it on her own, eventually starting her own company with her sister. Everyone's doing this now, with her sister and sourcing and recruiting. But now she jokes about driving a Range Rover and wearing Lululemon and going to yoga. Well, how much does his retirement can have? Well, he's, what, 31, makes a lot of money? Probably like a couple hundred K. Really? Not much? I told her... Had it been the case that I met her when she was 22, I was my current age, then sure. But she isn't 22 anymore. <laughs> After I said that, she just started crying like crazy. So there is, I don't, you guys might think this is offensive, but we watch a lot of dating reality shows and the, the arc that I just take extreme passion in is what I call the last train out of town arc. And it's the woman who has been a career woman her entire life She's 34 and she's not in a relationship and she's just like, you know, la trying to find the last train out of town. Real desperation is setting in. That is an arc I thoroughly enjoy. And I feel like that's kind of what's playing out here because now it's pretty clear. There is, even though you guys are in love and all that, there's some sort of power dynamic where she's clearly now seeing like he has a little bit more of the chips mm -hmm. in play. Mm -hmm. And I think she's trying to compensate. What are your, what's your read on the situation? Um, I don't think there's much to read. Like, what, what is he trying to get from us? Like, why is he giving us this story? Um, like, what's his question? Yeah. I tried to talk to her, but she was in no state for conversation. I don't know what to say. So she's mad that he said she's not hot and trophy. Yeah, material. like, if she was 22, then maybe he could understand what she's saying. But she's 31. She's 30. 31. Uh, she is more often entertained the idea of being a stay-at-home wife. So he doesn't want a stay-at-home wife. And he might. Who knows? But well, yeah, the relationship was formed with her being a career woman. Yeah. So I think he wants something like that. I don't know. This is just like, I feel like this could be very common of, an, of a problem, right? A lot of women I, I think realize is. like, oh, you know what? I don't want to work anymore. I just want to stay home with the kids. And it's like... That's a lot of pressure on the husband, I guess, or the man. Yeah. Um, I, like, if I said that, you would be fine with it, right? What? If I was just like, I don't want to work anymore, I just want to be a housewife and have, like, four kids. Assuming, yeah, if you take care of the kids, I'm down with that. A yeah. lot of people these days are not down with right. that. Right, so if he's not down with it, then, like, and that's what she really wants, Yeah. there's an issue. Some of the... Uh, the first response, it seems like a good one. This seems to be a very textbook case of psychological projection. Because of your discrepancy in salary, she feels like she is worth less than you. She feels like her best years are behind her, last train out of town, seeing as you took off and are only going up. Her poking around about her being a trophy wife is, is seeking validation. Yeah. It's just confusing that she would feel that way because, like, if I find out you make more than me, like significantly more, I'd be very happy. I'd be like, well, we're a team, so that's also mine. I right? guess, how long have they been dating? We don't know that, oh, right? That's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. So, but if they're like on their way to marriage, like, does it matter? I don't understand how this is like a big shock just because she saw your retirement balance. Because if you're like a, a computer engineer at Google, like obviously you're making way more money than her. 
And if you're going to get married, isn't she going to see that eventually? And, like, be okay with it? And just, like, why would that so drastically change her view on things? I guess she's just very insecure. A spider just crawled over my forehead. Ew. Ew. Uh, You're a good man, Matt. I am? Thank you. That's a lot of work for the stay-at-home parent. The taking care of the kids? That's a lot of work for the state. Yeah, it is a lot of work. She acts like she is entitled. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's the issue. It's like if she was just like, hey, babe, like, I want to be a stay-at-home mom instead of like, I'm the hot one, you're the nerdy one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it also probably stems from her self-esteem a little bit. Like, she doesn't think she's worthy of this man that makes all this money. Yeah. I don't know. That's a you problem, baby. I think it is a lot of a her problem, yeah. Like, the guys, unless unless he's, like, really being like, you're 30, like, get Ew, over gross. yourself. Yeah, yeah, you're not 22 anymore. <laughs> unless he's being a huge dick about it. Like, I, I feel like he's probably goofing. A little. Um, she might want to hear she is the package you love. Yeah, she probably does want to hear that. That's what we all want to hear, right? I love you. You're the best. There's a difference between wanting to hear something and being open to actually hearing it, though. Because I, my, what I think is if he said that to her, she probably wouldn't believe it, you know? She'd be like, you still want me to be 22. Well, now, because he made the comment. Yeah. <sighs> um, yeah. Okay. Good job. This was fun. Next time, the computer won't be buzzing. I don't know how to fix time. that. I just bang mine. Oh, guys, I've also been playing Risk World Domination on the computer. It's really fun. Yeah, I stayed up all night last night. If you guys know of any good strategy games, like, not all the way to the crazy nerdy realm of, like, like Catan. Magic the Gathering type, like, that's a little too far, but somewhere in the realm of just, like, relaxing strategy games, let me know. So glad I have a good man, says Cynthia. I was married to someone who left it all up to me to take care of the kids. Everything. She needs to leave him. Um, I don't, that's not the vibe I'm getting from them, but yeah, I feel like there are a lot of men out there who just check out completely. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Like, I feel super grateful. You don't think I check out? I mean, so the only time I will say that you checked out, and I can say that with, like, confidence, is the first two weeks, night shift. A the well, actually, I all, did check of, out a all of night shift. I cooked for you and stuff, though. But yeah, I checked yeah. out a little. But, like, night shift Matt just can't do. Which is the hardest. I was married to someone who left it all up to me to take care of the kids. Was that not the agreement going in, though? I guess that's, that's more where the problem arises, right? Yeah. Because my mom took care of the kids. And they agreed on that. And I'm grateful for it. Your dad didn't do anything? He said he changed a lot of diapers. Like, Matt doesn't do po poo diapers. No. And Matt's I'm dad... I'm a playful parent. Matt's dad did poo <laughs> diapers. That's what he says. I'm sure he did, though. He wouldn't lie about that. Maybe he lies. You are the playful one. Dio knows what's up. He's like, oh, I got a dookie? I'm going to go to mom. <laughs> oh, I want to play and get thrown in the air. I'm going to go to dad. Since when do you say dookie? I just say it. It is a give and take. That's very wise of you, OT. Got some good game recommendations. I have played Total War one time. It's a little too intense for me, but maybe I'll give that a try again. Both. Both of you work from home and play video games for money. We play video games for money? What does that mean? We don't play video games for money. <laughs> I wish. I play video games just for fun and not that often. Yeah, you're both shamey stay-at-home parents. We are not shamey. Are we shamey stay-at-home parents? Whoa, where did you come from? Really? I'm all about stay-at-home parents. I want to give you my real theory, but some of my thoughts are offensive. My actual theory, tailoring on to my last train out of town theory, which is very pro stay-at-home parent, is that these days, most women are, I think, like this girl, and I hate generalizing, like most women, and you're sold this idea of career is the way to go. I think kids taking care of the house, there's something to be said for that. No, it's just too I, beautiful. It's harder. Yeah, I would say it's not being a woman and just, like, putting myself in those shoes, I could see it being more fulfilling. Yeah. That's why I like the last train out of town narrative, because the lady's regretting her life choices. You know, it's like I'm commiserating with her. I can understand. She's 34. She has all the money she wants. She's successful in her career. What she really wants is a family and kids. 
Yeah. Or at least like a family, I guess. Um, trophy wife is derogatory. My beautiful one is more superb. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like that, man. Good for you. Coleman Outdoors. How's it going? Yeah, we Thank know you. Him, right? Yeah. It's fine. Some women like being called trophy wife, I think, though. I like being called a bulldog. Yeah, I call you that sometimes. <laughs> I call Theo that, too. I mean, if, if I was called, like, if you called me a trophy wife, I would take that as a compliment. Yeah, you are one. But I don't think I'm a trophy wife. Like, trophy wife is like, who's a trophy wife? See, to me, trophy wife is like, Kind of like a, a blonde southern woman. That's like what I think. Like very attractive. As a trophy. Like she cooks really well. No, no, no. She yeah. don't cook really I'm well. thinking just classic southern housewife. No, because if she cooks really well, she has to be like curvy. But trophy wife to me is just super lean, like, you know, like the housewives women. Yeah. Just like yeah, super you know, fit, they... doing the yoga. Yeah. Um, once the kids are gone, it's not more fulfilling. We get one life. It's hard, but you have to choose wisely. Oh. Yeah, I guess I could see that. I don't know. It must feel kind of like empty. I think about my mom like that sometimes because she was just like, you know, all in mother. Like mother's her defining characteristic. So yeah. like I can kind of relate because like basketball was my thing. And then when I turned like 24, I was like, can't play basketball anymore. Now what do you do? I guess I go to work. I get a job. Yeah, but your mom still works here and there. She takes care of your grandma. Yeah. I mean, she wants to be in your life, but you just you just push her away. No, I don't. I talk to her. His time. mom is just like, <laughs> we were just talking to her, and she's just the best. She's like, what do you, like, we're going to go visit, and she's like, what do you want to drink, to eat? What do you want me to get? Like, this and that. She's like, what do you love to drink? He's like, water. It's like, bro, <laughs> come on. You like Zevia. You like whiskey. Like, put it out there. Like, she's your mom. She wants to get you stuff. Someone says trophy wife is high maintenance. Yeah, that is true. I wouldn't mind being high maintenance. Take care of your babies. Whatever parent can do it. You'll never get that time back. You are an essential worker. Yeah, I like that. Oh, well, from Philly. NY to Philly. My wife calls me the old balls and chain. That's fun. That is, I like that one. Oh, that's Derek. Yeah. Hi, Derek. Um, call, call your mom, mom man. I know. I he's call he's every definitely day. called her Almost more every day. now that we have Theo. I thought trophy wife was just some time you use your money on. Someone, Someone you just take to the parties to show off. No, that's like a freak in the sheets, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, trophy wife is like, you make a lot of money. You don't need someone to cook clean or take care of your kids because you can have someone else do that. And she just like that's looks what good a trophy at wife represents. Yeah. Yeah, she don't so, need to do any work. Trophy wife is essentially like sort of the same thing as like a Lamborghini, like a vacation home. It's all the same. It's all the same thing, <laughs> essentially. Okay, now we're getting dicey. My husband is a stay-at-home dad, and it works. That is so cute. That would be cute. She wants to take care of you till this day. Yeah, his mom really wants to take care of the kids. Who? My mom? Yeah. Yeah. She loves it. Yeah. All right. I guess we should call it. This is a fun one, guys. Julius, go to dad. Go to dad. Take Come here. Oh. Julius has been getting puppuccinos every morning because I've been going to Starbucks. You get them every morning? Every morning. <gasps> well, he's going to ease from 180 to two, 450. You having too many puppuccinos? Are you going to get fat? All right, guys. Bye. A couple weeks. We'll be back.